Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing this little um, beetle from this page. This is um, a page from World of Flowers. In the main book it's actually a double page spread with two um, bordered creatures, um, bugs, but this is from the planner from um, the week of the 12th of April. So I'm just going to be um, doing this little bug in this tutorial because there's quite a lot of detail in there. And I have to say, when I first did this page, it's a little bit close, I struggled to work out quite what to do with it. And I actually left it till last, I think, in my World of Flowers book. But I'm going to um, have a go and let you know. So I'm going to start with Violet. This is from my Polychromos. So this is the lightest purpley shade. And I'm just going to do all the background of the bug in this colour just in a light shade. Now I'm actually going to colour over these little dots here because they're very small I'm not going to be able to do much with them so I'm going to colour over those. Now with this page I find I've looked at lots of people's versions of this page and I did it myself um, eventually and decided that having a limited colour palette was probably the best way to go um, to not only make it easy to but make it more coherent because there's so many little details if you did all of them in a different colour it could just look a little bit sort of wild I suppose um, some people have a knack of doing lots of colours and making it look really lovely but uh, I find that trying to stick to a more limited palette seems to work better for me so what I'm doing is I'm just getting a little basic layer of this purple colour down and then I'm going to try to add a little bit of shape to the bug before um, adding some colour and detail to um, the leaves. I don't know if you can see quite the bottom. Um, I probably haven't pushed it up. It just doesn't want to quite go. There we go. So I'm now moving on to this part. And I'm using quite small strokes and my pencil is very sharp. Now I've just sharpened it using my normal um, Norris Club Studler, sharp, Studler Sharpener. But I have um, put a blade, a new blade in there quite recently and it makes a really big difference to how sharp you can get your pencil. If you have a look at that, it's uh, rather nice and sharp, which is what I need for these little details. Um, obviously it doesn't necessarily, lots of people ask questions about sharpeners. Some people prefer certain ones. I like one that collects the sharpenings just because I think it's less messy and if I had a pot of sharpenings on my desk they'd be all over the floor every day. I'm not the, uh, I'm quite clumsy and uh, so I find that better me um, but uh, I have found that the ones without barrels actually are sometimes really really good so uh, it sort of depends on you really now I'm gonna do this sort of head part in the same color but I'm just going to tackle the body first just trying to quite work out what the lines are going on down there So uh, it's part of the reason why I sort of do the backgroundy bit first so that I can see what's going on with the foreground. And that helps me sort of plan the rest of it. Now with the, um, I'm not going to colour the whole of this page. As I say, I'm only going to tackle the bug. But um, I think that what I would probably do is use the same colours. Um, maybe do the background of this part with this colour. Um, and the same sort of colours for the flowers and leaves and that sort of thing. I've actually picked out the purples that I'm going to use. But I haven't picked out any other colours. But I have got a few plans for the flowers. I was thinking pink. Pink and purple are always going to work well together, aren't they? I think when I did this the first time, I didn't 
colour in the details on the bug. I coloured over them and just made the bug look like a shiny gemstone, which was quite fun. but I wanted to do it a bit differently this time. Now I've finished the main part of the body here. I'm going to do the head part as well. Now this is almost split into sections because of this branch area, but I'm going to do the whole bit in this colour, just for ease in a way. And because I think it will look better, just trying to work out what's what as I go. Sometimes it can uh, be all too easy to colour over something that you didn't really want to be that colour. But I find once you've put down this initial layer and established what's what, it makes it easier. See, between these petals there are little gaps here and here, here and here as well and in that one. trying to get it all done. Now I finish colouring my um, World of Flowers, my actual book. I did it really quickly. I think it's the fastest one I finished. I really enjoyed it. it I still sort of think Enchanted Forest is my favourite, but um, I really particularly enjoyed that book. Now I'm picking up this one. This is the um, purple violet. It, you can only see violet because it's sharpened. And what I'm going to do is just do a bit around the edge of the bug. I should push him up just a tad. There we go. So I'm going to put more colour around the edges and darken it up. I hope you can see that in the camera. Yes, it does show, doesn't it? And then um, do less towards the centre. Yes, I have, but I only got one copy of, of World of Flowers, so uh, I haven't had a chance to sort of start a second copy. Um, but I, I've, uh, I've done a flip through of my finished copy and there's a link in the description. I always pop a link in because I know people enjoy looking at flip throughs for sort of inspiration. So uh, I always include the link. Um, my flip throughs were some of my first videos that I made so they're not the most brilliant quality. But hopefully they're uh, good enough for you to see. My more recent flip throughs are a little better, I hope. Okay, so I'm happy with the amount on that top bit and we'll do the same down here on the on this lower part. Now these dots that I'm covering over I'll probably um, do something with towards the end if I remember. I might do a few white gel pen dots or something like that. But as I say, if I remember. I tend to think of things and then get carried away and forget. Actually, maybe if I grab my pen and put it next to me, I might remember. You never know. Oh, look, I missed that bit. I'm just going to grab the lighter colour and just go in there. I'm going to fade that bit out a bit now. Don't need too much in there and go over to this side. So I'm hoping that by doing this, it'll make the bug look a little bit more rounded, a little bit more, um, less flat. It may not work, but even if it doesn't give it that 3D impact, it will certainly um, give it some interest, which is always nice, I think, to, I think, Although I uh, very I admire those that can get a really flat colour that's even, I'm not very good at that. Um, if I try it, you see, it doesn't look even, so I think it's better to go for a non-even finish, and then I can achieve that. Now this is the Delft Blue. 
Um, there is a mauve, but I rather like the blue um, to add a slightly different tone as well. Sorry, I just had to get my hanky out. So uh, I'm going to do the very edge in this blue colour. And it is quite purpley. It's just uh, a rather pretty one, I think. And uh, you see, I'm not going too far in with this one because uh, we don't want the dark parts to be too far into the bug. And same on the other side, just a little application here and there, just to darken up a few areas. Now you can work over and over that to really smooth it out, but I'm going to leave it there for now and I'm going to move on to the flowers for you. Now I grabbing the colour that I want. This is the, hmm, what is it, one, two, five. This is the middle purple pink and I rather like it. I'm going to use it on these flowers here. Now to make them a little more um, realistic I suppose, I'm going to do a harder layer here and then less towards the end of the petal to make it look like there's some shadow. I use this technique a lot and I think it just helps make it look a little more real but I realise it's not always easy to know how to do less pressure as you get towards the edge. If you find you've done that and they all look really similar then just go back over this bit in the middle like this. You can use the stroke where you push down hard and then lift like that and you'll find that it will then be darker near the middle and lighter towards the outside. I'm just trying to make sure it's fairly even. And I'm going to also do the middle of the flower with this colour and I'm going to try and do a darker bit there and lighter at the top. It doesn't show up that well. But uh, that's, uh, I decided not to introduce a yellow into this for the flower middle or anything. I might decide a black looks better than the colour I've used but I could go over the top but I think this will work. There we go and so these are all going to be the same. Now thinking about the green while we're doing this we need to do all these leaves now you just decide whether you're going to use the same green for all of them or whether you want to do several shades or even more than several shades. So uh, it's, uh, it's worth having a think and also what sort of shade of green would you want to do. Um, there are lots of shades in the polychromos, I've got the full set. There are quite a lot of greens which is really good but there are the more bluey greens like the emerald greens and the phthalo, can't say it, phthalo greens and things like that and uh, one minute sorry I just shut the door my husband's here and he's on the telephone and he's decided to have a very loud conversation with somebody so uh, I thought I'd shut the door, we don't want to hear that. So, uh, I want, he sounds like he's shouting, I want to be nice and calm. So anyway we have the uh, more emerald and phthalo and cobalt greens which are the more bluey greens or we have the um, we have the olivey greens and the brownie greens which I don't think will work. Now we have these flowers here and what I think I'm going to do slightly different look to these. So the little piece around the edge I'm going to do in this dark colour because it looks like they might be a lower level of petal and so they might be 
um, shaded um, so I'm doing these darker and ones on the top would catch the light more and then I'll grab a lighter colour to do the the top ones there'll be a little bit of a contrast from the other flowers as well and it's not going to be a vastly different shade because this is the um, middle purple pink we'll grab the um, light oh probably I think there's another one I'm just looking on my on my list there's a light purple pink we might use that and we assume from the name that's in the same colour group and so it'll be similar I'm not sure which one it is I'll have to have a look in a minute I've got my tin open beside me see when I've, I've been colouring with the polychromos for such a long time but I didn't used to really take that much notice of the names I would just grab the colours by looking at the um, because the, you've got the whole colour is the pencil just don't really need to look at the names you can just know them by the colour but once I started doing videos I had to start telling you what they were called because obviously the camera doesn't pick up the colour so I'm starting to learn the names a little bit more so you can see I'm not sometimes when I do this sort of thing I do do a little bit of a different tone of colour but uh, there isn't space, it's quite small so this is just a hard layer. You could even do this with a gel pen. I'm also going to do the centres in this colour. I'm going to try and do the same technique as before with a harder layer at the bottom and then lighter towards the top like that and now I'm going to grab this colour I think it's this one can I have a look? No. Which number is it? Sorry, bear with me. One, two, eight. What is that? No, it's this one. This one here. Light, light purple pink. You can't see it. The lamp is shining off it. So with this one, I'm going to put a little bit more pressure near the middle, like that, and then gently take the colour towards the edge. There we go. Make sure you use a similar technique for each of these flowers. Now I'm thinking, because we've got pink here, and this is quite a bright pink, we could do these little dots in a pink. Now, um, a normal pink um, marker or felt pen wouldn't show up on top of the purple, as I'm sure you would realise. But if you've got a gel pen or a Posca paint pen or any other type of paint pen, then that might work. But my Posca paint pen is really neon pink, so I'm not sure whether it's going to be quite the right colour or whether white might be the way to go. So I'll ponder that. This is the sort of thing that's going on in my head while I'm colouring. I know it's supposed to be a mindful process and we're supposed to just be concentrating on exactly what we're doing. But I think as long as I'm thinking about other colouring bits and bobs it's okay. And these here. And I'm also thinking, what colour should I do for this background here? I'm not going to do it now. I could just, I may leave it white. What I will do is finish the whole thing and then see. Because I'll use the purples for the background of this bouldery bit. It might be nice to have a bit of a white around the bug. Just to sort of show it off, as it were. Okay, now we do have a couple of other flowers here and here and I think I'm going to use this lighter colour but have a much more delicate touch so I'm going to actually just put a really light layer on like this 
and then I'm just going to darken the bottom just a tad Now if you can't do this light touch, don't worry, just just darken the bottom still and it'll be fine. And up here we've got one more, so I'm going to go back to the original pink, the middle purple pink. And for these I'm going to make them darker here and lighter towards the tip. Now we have a few shapes on this and here which I'm looking at thinking these don't look like leaves and this bit, is this bit actually a space or is it a petal? I think I'm going to do this as a petal. I think that looks better and that bit in the middle, what you're going to do with the lighter pink, so back with the light purple pink. And I'm going to probably do it a bit darker at the bottom. There we are. So that's the flowers done. And now we're going to do the leaves. Now, I have pretty much decided on doing the more emeraldy green leaves. But I think I'm going to keep them quite light. So I'm going to use these two greens. This one's really pale, but I think they're quite fun. This is the emerald green. And this is the light phthalo green. I actually looked up the pronunciation of that. I'm going to sharpen them because I didn't. I thought it looks like phthalo, but I think it must be silent at the beginning because uh, I actually went onto a search engine and looked up how to pronounce it, and it's phthalo. Now I'm just going to use a similar technique with all of the green items in that I'm going to start with this emerald and put in some dark areas and because this is symmetrical I'm going to go over and do this side I know I can sort of look and copy but I still find it easier if I do it this way let's take that one down a little bit more because it's quite a long piece and uh, same here so put some dark in here and then just Oh, excuse me, try and fade it out. The same here. Fade. And here, and a bit on this one. Can you see? Are you in shot? Yes. That's lucky. So the same with this one. And here. And here. Now up here I'm going to do all this as if it's leaves, I'm really not sure, but now this is quite a complex shape. I think what I'm going to do is do a darker layer here and just fade that out and I shall finish that off with the other colour. I really don't know what it is, it's just a pretty pattern I think. Johanna's so creative with her lovely patterns. And here, and I'm going to do this consistently in that it's going to be the base of the leaf that I shade darker and the tip that's lighter. You don't have to do it that way, you can do it in reverse. You can do some some way, some the other. You can do some so that it's darker on the side rather than the base or the tip. I, I filled this bit in with quite a solid block because it looks to me like it's a sort of stems or stalks. So we're just going to do these ones in the same way. And I rather like these pretty bugs. I know some people struggle with bugs. I There's some I'm not keen on and some I'm fine with. Um, larger things I'm not so happy with. Wood lice I absolutely love. They are just the cutest. We've always got loads. At the moment there's tons in our house and uh, I think they're lovely. My goodness knows where they come from. 
So this bit again, just a touch. Now that's um, I'm just going to do it there, down here, out of the lines. <laughs> I think I go out the lines in every single picture, but I just, it's just me. Right, let's move this up so you can see the bottom. And nothing too fancy here. And there. Now we're going to go in with this one. Um, Let's start at the bottom, why not? So start here where this where we start to fade and then just take it gently down to the tip of the uh, different part that you're doing. It's quite a simple process. I rather like this colour. It's a very similar to colour to this in Prisma colours as well. Let's do this long one and then I'll move it up. Um, I think it Spring green and true green are these sorts of shades. They're rather pretty. So I'm just going to move that now so I don't forget and uh, get you out of shot. And there I am colouring a bit you can't see. So we have this bit coming up here. So really now it's easy. It's just, it's just fill in the spaces that we've left behind. So uh, nice and relaxing and we're nearly done. And what I will do is the rest of this page I will complete using just these colours. I will keep it really simple and uh, I think not only does that make it easier for me with regards to decision making, it ends up with a more cohesive palette and um, I think it looks it can look nicer and it just takes the decision making away now. Obviously I understand that some people find that boring. They find that using the same colours all the time gets a bit dull and I completely understand that. And uh, you can of course vary it if you want to. I mean colouring Although it's lovely to get brilliant results, it should also be very much about the process of enjoyment. If you're not enjoying it, then move on. Either turn the page to a different picture or change the colour you're using and uh, move on. And the same, you know, if I'm using colours here that you dislike, then do something else, for goodness sake. Don't, uh, don't feel you've got to do it this way. And you can adapt this for any brand of pencil as well. Just basically we've got two greens, two pinks and three purples. It's quite simple. There we go. So there's our bug. I should just zoom out a little bit for you and push him up. And we've got the jelly roll which I grabbed out earlier. This is my number 10 which is quite thick so I'm going to have to be careful with my dots. It makes quite big dots which can be useful but I have to be a bit careful because it can be a bit splodgy. Okay now I think it could do with a few more dots. I'm going to just add a few more in a few more places because I want it to look quite magical. Now you don't have to do this. I'm just getting a bit carried away with dots really. I put some at the top as well. try and make them reasonably symmetrical and try not to put your finger in them which is my um, trick usual trick um, yeah I think that'll do 
I don't know how well you can see the dots on camera but anyway he's done now so there he is or she what do you reckon he or she it's quite pink and purple but why shouldn't it be a pink and purple he so there we go so I hope you enjoyed that one um thank you for watching <laughs> there we go and uh happy coloring